Twitch, out there on YouTube, or wherever on the internet you happen to be watching. Welcome to the moon. This is Station Ears, and uh, we are going to try and set up some solar power, which we have got, well, the sun's about to go down, we'd better get on with it before the sun comes up again. Iron frames, iron sheets for a foundation. Solar panel kits, not solar panel basic, but solar panel. Some glass sheets, heavy cable, light cable, can of spray paint for later, a battery, power controller, or a stack of them, and some gubbins for the automation, which is going to come last. So let's begin. First job, setting up a foundation. Now we're setting this up on a particular direction. See how the sun has gone down over there? It's going to rise over there. So we want a line that goes out perpendicular to that so that all our solar panels get a nice even amount of sunlight and none of them cast shadows on each other. One, two, three, four, five. We've got room for five solar panels there. I'm going to put enough second story on so that when we build buildings, once more, we don't cast shadows on our panels. Drop frames back in the box, sheets out. Welder. Bit of welding time. Hot, hot, hot. We only need one truss work to give the panel something to sit on. Makes life a little easier for walking back and forth as well, although we're going to have a fair amount of work with this using the jetpack. Why are we setting out five squares? Well, squares are cheap. And panels, panels are more expensive. We'll build those as we go along. Right. Look at the earth. The sun has set on that side. The sun has rising over this side. So we want the data ports on our solar panels to point towards the sunrise. I'll set up a couple of them now. The rest can wait for later. So data ports to sunrise, power ports to sunset. These are solar panel dual. You can have just solar panel. We want solar panel dual for all manner of reasons. Panels can go back in. Glass sheets to complete them. Boop. Boop. Solar panels finished. Wiring. We're using heavy cable. Heavy cable because light cable can only take a limited amount of power. And later on, when your base is quite big, you're probably going to want more solar panels than your light cable can actually manage with. If you put the wire snips in your other hand, everything will nicely splice together. So you can see I just do that. I don't have to choose a junction. The machine sorts it out for me. There we go. We'll send this down. Ready for the next bit. Why do we use these particular solar panels? If you get a spanner out, you can change their orientation. Now that's super handy, but an absolute pain in the trousers if you want to be out doing it every day. You don't want to be doing that, not by yourself. But it also means that you can automate it. What have I got in my pan? Oh, great. My tablet has a flat battery. So I'll pop that out. And because we're in creative mode, I'm going to cheat and spawn a new one. Battery. Nice big one. Pick that up. Drop it in the tablet. Device configuration. Very useful. You can see a solar panel has things like a charge, zero, because it's night, there's no sun, and a horizontal and a vertical. Horizontal and vertical uh, are values that can be written to by automation. So that's what we're going to do. Got a wire coming down. That wire should go into a battery. Batteries, this is a, a small station battery 
have an input on the back and an output on the front. Do not connect these together. It would be bad. It would be pretty much the same as shorting out a battery in real life. All the cables go pop. You cry. You have to make new cables. So that's going to be there. We'll switch it on. Nothing will happen because it's night. How long have we got? We've got a little light yet. Right. So at the front of the battery, we're actually going to take power. And that's going to be regulated by a thing called a power controller. Area power controller. We can stick that on a wall. Now notice it's got a left and a right version. We want the power to come in on the in side and go out on the out side. Pretty obvious stuff, but you know, you've got to pay attention to which side is which. When you put it down on the world, your outside has a lightning bolt, your inside has a green thing, a uh, data signal. Open it up with a crowbar, and you can see that it has a little slot to charge a battery. That is handy. Oop. We can stick that in there. That little battery will act as a sort of backup in case you lose power to a particular area of your base. The power controller will keep things rolling for just a little while if you put a small battery in there, or slightly longer if you put a large battery. Its main function though is to isolate power. So we've got a big load of juice coming in here, we're going to power a whole bunch of things. But this fella is just going to have a little bit of power coming to one function, maybe your gas filtration, maybe your sorting, maybe your manufacturing. Uh, could be anything. Right. Next thing to do is remember to switch it on. If you don't switch it on, it doesn't do anything. And it's all marginally embarrassing. Nothing's going to happen right now. We haven't got any juice coming in. The sun hasn't quite come up. Any minute now, though. So whilst it's still dark, we've got a little time. Mm -hmm to add in those extra solar panels that we spoke about earlier. We don't have to do this in the dark. I'm just trying to rush because it's cool. Three more panels. Come on, down you go. Three more glass sheets. And a bit more wiring on the back. So, on the outside of our APC, we can have a little more wire. Plunk. That can go to anywhere you like. That can branch off and attach to whatever you feel like. But what we want is to automate this. We want all the solar panels to point towards the sun automatically. To do that, we're going to need to have a thing to drive the automation. And that is going to be a chip. One of the little programmable chips that exist in this game and are awesome on a number of levels. I put down a chip socket with the power coming in, driven off the APC. And we've got a signal connector on the other side. Now, I'm going to differentiate signal from power by the means of light versus heavy cable. Light cable can only take a small amount of power compared to heavy, but signals don't actually take up that much juice, so it'll be plenty. All of our solar panels need to be wired up to signal because they're all going to be driven. So, 
Off we go. More wiring. Come on. Wire, 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 wire. And the chip is going to eat some information from a sensor. Make a sensor kit. It's a thing called the daylight sensor. And when you place it down, its data port should be facing towards the sunrise like the data ports on the solar panels. That hooks in to the wiring loom and we're done with wiring for a little while. Daylight sensor, you can see already it's telling us where the sun is, solar angle 89 degrees, there we go, just above the, sun, uh, above the horizon. And that is what we're going to use to calculate where the sun, where the, the solar panels should point themselves. Laptop. Any computer will do, but the laptop is a joyful piece of kit. And if you're able to make chips, you should be able to make the laptop. Pop the chip in, edit it, clear that. You're going to need to go to my Steam Workshop and pull out a subscription to the Mars Solar. It'll work on any planet. It's just called Mars because that's where I wrote it. The Mars Solar Code. If you subscribe to that, it will turn up in your code library. You can just pull it in to the chip editor. It'll tell you all about the thing. Uh, and you can confirm it, export it. That means it's blown onto the chip. Pull out the chip. 978 bytes. That is a sign that you've done it right. Put it in the socket and the next bit pull out a screwdriver and actually wire up the correct objects to the chip itself to find out what you need to do oh, hang on that should have woken up but it hasn't we need a little juice in here so are we not getting any juice through the panels yet only a, a little. Did I not wire up the battery right? I wired up the battery right. I'm trying to work out why we haven't got any wire juice in there yet. No matter. Ah, there we go. Just had to wait another few seconds. That there, green and blue flashing, says that there is juice coming through and we are charging the battery in the APC. Okay, just a little too, too quick for myself there. So we've turned on the chip, it's got an error. We'll turn it off again. The error is because it haven't actually turned the screws to point to the right things. First one has to point to panels. Points to solar panel dual. That's correct. The second one has to point to the sensor. Now we're going to click this a few times and it's going to say solar panel dual because it's cycling through each of the solar panels. Gets to daylight sensor. Sensor, daylight sensor. Winning. Turn the automation on. Is that not a beautiful thing to behold? All the solar panels carefully facing the sunlight. And if we watch, carefully ticking themselves to run at maximum efficiency. Yum, yum, yum. So our solar battery is charging. We've got an area power control to go to our automation, to go to our solar panels. Onto a winner. But what if we want to put something else in there as well? Our battery, there's only one battery right now, we can have more. Looks like I'm spawning loads of batteries today. Kit battery, we'll have one of them. We can put those in parallel. They're quite happy. So we can charge two batteries at once. That means we've got twice the capacity. The only thing to do is to remember to switch them on. Which I didn't do. There we go. So now we've got two batteries charging. If we wire their outputs nicely in parallel as well, that means that everything is all connected together. And when both batteries are flat, we've run out of juice. If we want to power something off in the distance, we could stick another area power control down. Notice we want this one to be facing the other way.
So there we go. Now that power is leading off to somewhere else. There isn't a battery in there. Doesn't need one. So that one's got no battery back up. That is pretty much that. We've got power coming in. We've got batteries charging. We can power anything we feel like over here. And the automation is running. And we've done it all before bright shiny noon. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and whoever's watching. I think that is about as much instruction as I can sensibly give you at this point. If you need any more questions there will be links in the bottom of the video if you're watching on YouTube to my Steam Workshop and my Twitch page and if you're looking on my Twitch page look on the about section you will find out links to the Steam Workshop to download that code, stuff it into a chip and everything will be absolutely fine. If you need more information, bounce me a question. I'm glad to answer them. Thanks a lot. Have a lovely day. See you later. Bye.